Hey everyone, this is DW's Darius and welcome back to the fish room. So today I'm gonna to give you guys a full fish room tour. I wanna show you all my aquariums and give you all some updates. I do plan on making some more changes down here. So this video will serve as a before and I guess my next fish room tour will be an after. So we're just gonna get straight to it. Over here I have two 125 gallon aquariums. On the bottom we have Mr. Indonymous. This is a Jaguar Dovi hybrid. Who's Moody earlier? He was super aggressive and I see he's looking at me but he's a little bit timid right now. But this is one of my most interactive fish. I love him because he pays so much attention to what's going on outside of the tank. You can see right there he just stood his ground a little bit. I love him because recently he's been showing some great color. He has that nice golden body and the red eyes contrast so perfectly. Um, but not too many changes with his tank because I can't really do anything. If I add any plants inside the aquarium he'll destroy them. I try adding plants to his filter. He snatched some of them out, but one of them is still alive and I'm hoping that it's able to grow across this back part. But he will jump out and grab leaves because he just hates decorations. And that's because these fish, this is his territory and he wants a territory that's manageable and he doesn't want any blind spots. If you have plants, if you have decorations, he can't really see his whole territory and it's a blind spot. So he wants an open plain like this with a little cave over here and this is perfect. Eventually, it wouldn't be bad to give him a bigger aquarium, but for now, he's um, doing his thing down here. Um, after that, we have this 125 gallon aquarium. This is mainly a grow out tank. We have a wide variety of species in this tank, including a red air slider turtle. And I'm just so impressed with how big this turtle got. He actually escaped the other day. I found him on the other side of the fish room. So it tells me pretty soon I'm going to have to take him out and put him in the backyard pond because he's tired of this little aquarium, even though it's so big. Um, but yeah, this guy, when I first got him, he was about an inch, and now he's about five inches. So it's pretty cool to see that change in such a short period of time. When it comes to fish, we have a nice school of giant danio. I have 10 of these. I love these fish in my tank, especially my grow out aquariums, because these fish are always moving, and that behavior is just very contagious in the aquarium. A lot of these fish naturally would like to hide, but these giant danio, they don't know how to hide. Their natural defense is to run, or at least to, to swim away and they're just gonna always swim even if they're afraid. And that's gonna cause these other fish to just be a little bit more out and about because um, they're going based on the behavior of these giant Daniel. So I definitely love having these guys in my tank. Um, I only have them in my grow aquariums because obviously they're small and my bigger fish will eat them. Besides that, we also have some silver dollars. I have three, yeah, three of these striped silver dollars. These are wide bar silver dollars. And what's cool about these is that they'll get about 12 inches. So you know, I keep monster fish. I don't want pakus because they get too big. Let's just say an easy to handle monster fish. They don't get overwhelmingly big. They um, stay a nice 12 inches. Besides that, we have my banded leperinus, which are doing great. I added four of them to the tank. If you saw that video, one of them was actually terrified and he hid for like a month. But now all four of them are out and they're all doing great. And besides that, we have my cichlids. So we have a trio of black chin tilapia. I bought these and they were labeled as now tilapia and they ended up being a different species. I bought the now tilapia to be feeders because they get big and they grow fast. These definitely are not the same. They don't grow as fast, they don't get as big. So I'm probably just gonna keep them in my tanks as show fish. They definitely look cool and they're not aggressive. So they're great to have as dither fish in a tank. And then we have some Central American cichlids. We have my carpenter cichlid down here, a little youngster. We have three of these, these cichlids. I forgot their name, but they're in the same family as the fire mouth. Just what, they're called blue flash cichlids, I remember now. They are aggressive towards each other, but overall they're not too bad. So in this aquarium, I might separate like one, put them in my 210, but they're in here as well. I have two vieja. One is a Cinnaspillum and one is a Melnora. And then we have a Robert Sonai cichlid. No, actually a Rostratus. Cribroharis rostratus cichlid, which is a cool sand sift in Central American cichlid. All of these are being grown out for my Central American aquariums, my main display tanks. If we pan to the left, you can see my largest aquarium. This right here is my 880 gallon aquarium. So this tank is home to what I will call my moderate monsters. Normally you get a tank this size, you wanna fill it with just crazy monster fish like red-tailed catfish and arapaima. But what's the point of having a big tank if your fish are still gonna be stuffed? So I still have big fish, but these are moderate big fish that don't get too big. Um, so we have mainly a nice group of peacock bass. Right here is a male 
Seclamano, very beautiful fish and kind of greedy. He's kind of a jerk, but there's phases. Like right now he's calm, but let's say the female go into mating season, then he's gonna get a lot more aggressive. You can even see right there, he was challenging my male Cicla Azul. So um, he can be a jerk at times, but for the most part, I like him because he's always front and center. He's always trying to get food and he's just always wanting attention. This is my female. She's my oldest fish in this aquarium. And she's just a doll. She's ugly, but she's she's perfect because she loves me. Let me see if I could demonstrate that. She doesn't really, I won't use the word love. I'll say she um, trusts me. So she'll let me go and just do all that to her. And a lot of fish won't trust me that much or just allow me to have that much freedom with her. So she's not the best looking peacock bass, but she definitely is the best behaved when it comes to human peacock bass interaction. This right here is the crown, the king, or I should say the queen of the aquarium, that is my female Cyclotomensis. This fish has to be about 30 inches long. A true record for me, my biggest fish ever. Now, like I said, I like moderate monsters, so I was planning on rehoming them. I've actually been speaking to some of the aquariums in my area, but they don't like taking fish from homes because of course they don't want to release any diseases or illnesses into their giant ecosystems and that's understandable so i'm going to hold on to him for a little bit longer but um definitely an amazing fish not really as trusting as the other cyclamanos but a very cool fish not too aggressive and just a gentle giant almost he will eat smaller fish obviously because they are predators but for his si for her size she's um a great fish uh, besides that, we have my Cicla Orinoco up here. Um, this fish could be aggressive, but my Cicla Mono has become more dominant, so that's the reason why he's not aggressive now. And I really enjoy him because he has that nice green body. And then we have my Cicla Azul, which might be the third biggest fish in this tank. Grew very fast, but he's getting a lot of aggression from my Cicla Mono. And um, I, I think I like the Azul the most out of all the fish. Then we have this guy right here. This is my Meso here is Jeffreys, who is trying to become the tank boss. He's not the tank boss yet because obviously there's such a big size difference. This big fish is almost three, three times the size of that fish. So that's the reason why it's not the tank boss yet, but it's definitely trying. This is the only fish that's above him in a hierarchy. And that's pretty impressive considering fish like my Sigla Zul is about twice the size. And the reason why he's so dominant is because he's just very aggressive. He's very persistent with, with this aggression. Um, this fish is about maybe 14 inches. 14, maybe 16 inches. He's a very big fish, and I'd say he's pretty rare to get him to that size. He's in the same family as the Feste, um, because I know a lot of people are not too familiar with that fish. Um, besides that, we have my Pike Cichlid. Not the prettiest fish, but definitely one of the most nice fish to look at because it's just always up to stuff. This, this fish just inspects the aquarium, looks at every rock, every stick, and this fish, if it could talk, this would be the fish that um, I rely on for inventory because he knows everything that goes into this aquarium and that comes out of this tank. And besides that, we just have two catfish on the bottom. These are four line picked this catfish. We also have a Polyptus and a Cherai hiding in the caves. And I almost forgot because she's always hiding. We have my Jaguar Cichlid, a golden female Jaguar. She's hiding because she's just old and she doesn't really like the energy of these younger fish because they're they can be aggressive at times and she is small even though she's about 15 inches she is small compared to these guys so she likes to stay back there inside of the brush and um you're gonna have a hard time seeing her because she's pretty far back and whenever i show this tank i like to show the canopy grown above which i believe adds to the overall beauty of the tank not to mention that these plants help remove some of the waste that the fish produce because they consume nitrates but the size of these plants and just the beauty it just makes the tank look that much more better so i definitely love seeing that and then you can see to the left we have this little project so being that i don't really have too much space for any more aquariums i got into terrariums i have terrariums all over the house and this is one that i just set up like a week ago so for those of you who don't know terrariums are enclosures that house terrestrial life so your aquariums will house your aquatic life and your terrariums will house everything that is on land and I love these because you get to be creative and it doesn't take up as much space as aquariums and it doesn't consume as much electricity. So it's very easy just to release some of your creativity with these terrariums. And what we have here, this is just a little setup um, based on where I like to hike. So we have like a little waterway and we have moss on the sides. We have like a fallen log and just 
me expressing my creativity, I think it came out pretty great. And I designed this to be viewed on all three sides. No matter what angle you look at, you can see like a different story. And just pretty cool. I will be adding some more of these based on um, just the success of this one. As far as life, we do have some copepods in there. And we also have some springtails, which will help just with the overall ecosystem, help maintain it, remove any mold that builds up. And unfortunately, my basement has become infested with ants. So you will see ants in there every now and then as well. But just a, little, a nice little cheap addition and a nice way to express some of that fish tank creativity. Now, if we pan to the left, we're gonna see my second largest aquarium. And this is my 350 gallon tank. And I'd say that this is my most aggressive tank. This tank houses the most aggressive fish that I keep. Most of these fish come from Central America. And by nature, these guys are aggressive. Normally when you have fish that look this good, um, they tend to be a lot more aggressive. And um, for the most part, it balances out pretty well. Like one day he's super aggressive, but the next day he's super aggressive and they all have their turns. But every now and then they all join together and they start attacking one individual fish and that creates problems. So I don't want to go too much into the politics of this aquarium because I could go on forever. But I will say that everybody ganged up against some fish. So I'm going to have to create um, a new ecosystem. That's pretty much why I'm going to be making some changes. I'm going to have to put a new tank down here. I'm going to put a 125 and it's going to house the rejects. So we have my female parasite. She used to be the tank boss. She was beat by my black belt. When a black belt beat her, he tried to make sure that she, she wouldn't rise up again. While he was attacking her, this guy who's the second in command, he also attacked her. And of course, everybody else, like even right now, the dovi is in there trying to get cheap shots because the Pyrosai is pretty much a target fish. Same thing with this Jaguar Dovi hybrid, that's Indonymous' sister. She was beat by my Dovi, and then all the other fish that were below her tried to attack her, like this Madagascar cichlid, and a few other fish tried to attack her, so she's a reject. This guy right here, he's just smaller than everybody else, so he's already intimidated. But to make things worse, this guy who's a little bit bigger likes to target him just to make sure that he himself is not at the bottom of the hierarchy. This female, she's just hanging out. She's not really a reject, but I want to take him out as well and put him with them. These two are brothers. This guy is dominant. This guy is not. And I believe that he'll get better potential if he was by himself. He'll definitely be the tank boss of that reject aquarium. And it'll just save him the headache of having a war with his own brother. So I plan on taking those four fish out and putting them into this into the 125. I already bought the tank. I just got to do the swap -a -roo. Unfortunately, I will have to remove the 75 gallon aquarium. But um, my main enjoyment is from my New World cichlids. So I do have a tank at work where I could put these African cichlids in and change everything around. Besides that, it kind of sounds weird, but everything else is doing great. This guy, he's actually a reject and he looks great. No, I get him confused because um, the reject, I know he has this car. So this is the reject and this is my tank boss. He kind of has a little split fin, so I get him confused, but he's um, beautiful, he's doing great. My black ball cichlid is the tank boss. We have this female Finistratus, the juvenile Finistratus, definitely growing up nicely. We have the female Dovi. This is a, we have a female black fasciatus doing great. We have these two feste. I believe that these two feste might be females, which is great news. I've been trying to get females for years. I always end up with males and the males are just way too aggressive. So I think that this bigger one is definitely a female and I'm hoping that the smaller one is as well. If they both are females, I will be keeping both of them. I'll probably put one in that 125 down there and leave one up here. We have my Madagascar cichlid. She's doing great. She kind of claimed that territory. And then we have my Bristol's plecos. Now, for some reason, you can see them. I think they used to be in this cave and the jaguar started to attack them because she wanted the cave to herself. So now you can see my chocolate Bristol's pleco. And every now and then you'll see my um, albino come out as well. But that's what's going on in this tank. I know it sounds confusing because these fish do create hierarchies. There is politics to this aquarium and I'll have to do like a full video if you want a full explanation. But that's what's going on with that. And because of it, I will be creating a new Central American aquarium. So underneath the 350, we have these two aquariums. Let me hit the light on this tank. This 40 gallon aquarium, I keep the light off because it's empty. This is my hospital slash quarantine tank. So there's no need to turn the light on. So that's there, and then we have this 75. So as I mentioned, I will be taking out this 75 gallon aquarium. I won't be keeping these fish in this fish room. Now, as I mentioned, I did start a tank at work. It's a 90 gallon and bonus tank. So most of them will be going there. I might try to keep a few, 
But yeah, I'm gonna take out the 75 gallon aquarium. I'm gonna replace it with a 125 gallon aquarium. The 40 gallon tank is gonna be turned sideways. And um, from this tank, I'm probably gonna to try to get my jewel cichlids out. And I also have my crab. I'm trying to get some video of him. He's just very um, sketchy and hard to get on film. But I wanna get some video of him and I wanna get him out as well. And um, yeah, this tank will be gone by the next time I do a fish room tour. I did purchase that 125 in the backyard. It is in pretty rough shape, so we'll have to clean it up. But I will be installing it pretty soon because these fish, I think above, do need a break. Okay, everyone, so this right here is my third largest aquarium. This is a 210 gallon tank. I love this tank because of the energy. I love it because of the color. But we do have a few issues with this tank. So one, I used to keep African cichlids in this aquarium. And you know, African cichlids, they breed easily. So we have at least 10 embonal cichlids surviving. And they're getting big, so pretty soon, once again, I'm gonna have African cichlids in this tank. And I can't catch them now because they're just too small and too, too fast for me. So I'm gonna have to wait at least a few months for them to get bigger. And um, we have that problem all over again. And we have multiple species in this tank. I saw yellow labs, I saw um, red top zebras. So yeah, we have a whole colony growing up in this aquarium in the shadows. And besides that, my favorite fish, my African tiger scat, this guy right here. Um, this is one of my most interactive fish. Obviously, he's very beautiful. He looks like a saltwater fish. But this guy is an absolute jerk, especially towards my um, my rainbow fish. You might see it at some point in this, like you might see it now. You'll see it at some point in this video, but he attacks them. Now, they're all in the center because they think I'm about to feed the tank, but you saw right there, he attacked them. And when I'm not feeding them, they have to stay to the left side of the tank because if not, he will attack them. So when I make my changes in the fish room, he will be coming down into the fish room. And I'm gonna keep him with my cichlids. I do believe that he will be able to co coexist with them pretty well. It is unfortunate because this was my focal point for this aquarium. He's a very beautiful fish and it would be nice to have him up here but not if he behaves like that. Besides that, everybody else is doing great. Clown loaches doing great in this aquarium. My tiger barbs love the presence of the clown loaches, but I think that since I'm gonna take out the tiger scat, I'll probably just toss a few more tiger barbs in here and let this tank be at peace. Um, besides that, everybody else doing great and looking great, bala sharks, gentle giants. Um, yeah, that is a look at this aquarium, nothing else besides that. So these are two 20 gallon aquariums. These are my no tech tanks. It might be a little tough trying to look into them today because these things don't have lights. We rely on natural sunlight and it's a pretty cloudy day. So we might not get the best view, but you can still see we have some life inside the aquarium. So once again, no filters. We just rely on the plants to remove the waste that the fish produce. In this tank, we have a colony of cherry barbs. We have about 10 of them. When the sun is shining through, they look amazing, but right now, can't really see them too well. You can see them, but you can't really see how beautiful they really are. And besides that, we also have a blue garami over here. You can see them in that corner over there. And then we have hundreds of Malaysian trumpet snails. And we also have some nerite snails to help with the algae. And you can see that the nerite snails do a great job because this tank being in front of a window is a west window. So we do get sunsets with direct sunlight hitting this tank. And they do a good job keeping the glass nice and clean. Um, to the opposite side, we have this tank and we have a male paradise garami. We have some platies. We have an orange and a blue platy that just ran for me. And then we have this bristlenose pleco. And somewhere in there, we have another blue garami. This tank is just a lot more um, full of plants. The plants are doing much better in this aquarium because if you follow the channel, you know that I recently um, redid the substrate. I actually bought a whole new aquarium just to redo the substrate, give it fresh dirt, and put all the plants into the new tank. I'm probably going to do it with this tank because as you, as you can see, these plants not really as full as they used to be, and it's because the substrate is lacking nutrients because it's pretty much expired. This tank has been set up for like three years, so eventually the substrate loses its nutrients. Now, I did try root tabs, but it wasn't sufficient, so I'm probably just gonna redo it eventually. Um, but yeah, besides that, these two tanks are doing great. We got some peace lilies growing. This one's doing much better than this little one, um, probably because I keep these blinds open and not these, but um, not too terrible. Yeah, any changes with these tanks, I wanna um, just get some more platies in this aquarium because this is like a pond. And being able to look in here and see the bright color platies 
Um, mine is hiding, but um, when they are up and out and about, they do look fantastic. So yeah, that is a look at my Notec aquariums. Okay everyone, so this is going to be the final stop. We're going to take a look at some of my outdoor aquatics. Right here we have my 1,000 gallon pond. And I've been making some changes. If you saw my last video, I told you that I was going to rehome my koi. All the koi are gone, so we just have goldfish. Um, I love the koi. They're great to have. It's just, I wanted to do something different. I wanted to have more plants. And you know, koi eat plants. So I ended up giving the koi to somebody that has an 8,000 gallon pond, which is eight times bigger than my pond. So I'm pretty sure they'll love that. Um, besides that, I made a new filter. I have a small little video showing what I did with that, but it's working pretty good. You can't really see too well because of the glare and reflection, but um, those little dots are the substrate. It's a little bit of substrate. I have like a few pe pebbles that fell out of the um, planter, so you can kind of see to the bottom. We have goldfish in here. Eventually, I want to get some more fish in here, more goldfish, some native fish. Um, this one plant was huge. I was able to get these two plants off of it. I have more plants coming. But yeah, that's look at the pond. That waterfall is looking great. And then over here, this is just a little introduction to this setup. This is just a little temporal thing that I do during the warmer months. And right here, I think this this is like a 110 or something, this pond. And at first, I'm going to use it as a quarantine for the new goldfish that I get from my main pond. And then once it's warm enough, I'll probably bring my tilapia out here and let them hopefully reproduce and um, see what we get. But yeah, everyone, that's been a look at my aquatics. As always, I thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.